Hi, Spy Campers. My name's Miss Robin, and today I'm going to read you a book called Diego Rivera, His World and Ours. Diego Rivera was an artist from Mexico, and I looked him up to learn a little bit more about him and found out that his original name was Diego Maria de la Concepcion Juan Nepomucento Estanislao de la Rivera y Barrientos Acosta y Rodriguez. But he's known as Diego Rivera. In Mexico, the original people of Mexico were Mayans and Aztecs. But Mexico was taken over by the Spanish in the 1500s, about 500 years ago. And so they, everyone in that part of the world speaks Spanish today, and they adopted the Spanish custom of using the last name of all four of your grandparents. Most people in the United States have either their father's last name or their mother's last name, or sometimes their father's and mother's both last names but usually we don't have four last names, but Diego Rivera did, but it has been shortened to Diego Rivera. So this book is, this biography is called Diego Rivera, His World and Ours by Duncan Tonatua. Diego Rivera was born in Mexico in a city called Guanajuato, which means land of frogs. As a boy, Diego enjoyed playing with his trains, but more than anything, he liked to draw. Diego loved drawing so much that when he was a young man, he sailed on a ship across the ocean. He went to the city of Madrid in Spain to study art under the direction of a well-known painter. There he learned the classical way to paint, which means his finished paintings look very realistic, almost like photographs. There's a picture of him at art school. After his studies, Diego went to Paris, the capital of France. There he met young artists who were painting in new and exciting ways. He experimented with these new methods of painting himself. One method was called cubism, in which the painting did not exactly resemble its subject, but was composed of geometric shapes, such as squares, circles, and triangles. One day, a politician named Jose Vasconcelos urged Diego to return to Mexico. He wanted Diego and other artists to paint murals around the city about the Mexican people's history and customs. Diego was thrilled by this new project. When he returned to his homeland, Diego traveled through its deserts, mountains, and jungles. He wanted to be inspired by his country. He met people who worked the land and he visited the ruins of ancient Mexican civilizations like those of the Aztec and the Maya. Diego was full of ideas after his trips. With the help of friends and apprentices, he began to paint murals on large walls so that everyone in his country, rich and poor, young and old, could see and learn from them. In his murals, Diego combined the classical way of painting he had learned as a young man and the new styles of art he had experimented with abroad. But he merged them with the simple yet elegant forms of ancient Mexican art that he had grown passionate for after his travels. On the walls of an important government building, Diego painted the history of his country. 
He painted the struggle of the Mexican people to break free from the Spanish king. He also painted the fight that took place many years later when farmers and workers defended themselves against greedy men who were taking advantage of them. Diego painted his country's dances and traditions, such as La Zangunda, a love dance from the coastal area, and the dance of Los Listones, a ribbon dance from the south. There's the love dance, and that looks like the ribbon dance. He wanted to celebrate the things that were special to Mexico and wanted Mexicans from all distant parts of the land to learn about their culture and feel proud. Diego lived to be an old man. By the time he passed away, he had created many wonderful artworks and was celebrated by people in Mexico as well as around the world. But if he were alive today, what would he paint? Would he paint the way we dress and live? Would he paint the way we play? Would he paint the big city? As he painted the ancient Aztec city of Tenochtitlan, Or would he paint students at their desks? Just as he painted factory workers in the production line. Maybe Diego would paint shops at the mall as he painted street vendors selling flores. Or would he paint the luchadores wrestling in their costumes? Just as he painted the Aztec warriors fighting the invading soldiers, the Spanish conquistadors. Would Diego paint our craze for monsters and creatures from outer space? As he painted the god Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent? Diego's murals teach us about the past, but they also show a better future for common people. Diego imagined everyone, men and women, boys and girls of all ages and nationalities, living together and caring for one another. Today, Diego is not around to make this happen. So it's up to us to make our own murals and bring them to life. The end. So maybe now you'd like to paint a mural. Have fun. Bye-bye.